Welcome to Dub Nation, the official show of the Utah Warriors of Major League Rugby. I am Jeremy Jordan alongside Banksy on a loaded show today. We recap the game against San Diego, MLR round 12 around the league. We'll preview the matchup with the Dallas Jackals, second matchup with them. MLR round 13, we'll tell you what games are coming up. Plus, we'll chat with Logan Tongo, who scored against San Diego, the talented winger for the Utah Warriors. And a new segment, Banksy's Rugby Rant. That's all coming up. We begin in the seventh minute, big game with Utah and San Diego, uh, trying to defend home turf against the uh, the league's best team. And in the seventh minute, Utah got on the front foot with a opening try by Logan Tunnel. A great move to the outside. It was quick ball, and Logan just knowing where the space is, the defense didn't shuffle over. It was the perfect start for the Warriors in this match. And it was nice to get that early lead, get the crowd into it. They're always in it. And a nice pass and a distribution to the right side. And, hey, it's Utah 5 nothing unconverted try. Ma'anonu, of course, two-time world champ, all black, with uh, San Diego now. Gets a yellow card. Hey, head-to-head contact with Joe Hodgson. That means 15 on 14. Let's go. But San Diego takes on a penalty goal with Luke Burton, the first of several penalty goals. It's 5-3 Utah. 20th minute, Ben Grant gets a yellow card. Hey, it's 15 on 13 for two minutes. Uh, Luke Burton tacks on uh, another penalty goal at this point. Caleb Mockney then in the 37th minute later scores a try to make it 10-6. This was a great shift just before halftime. An unbelievable pass from Hodgson outside. Mockney just too much pace. Had Logan on the outside of him if he needed. Look at this flick from Hodgson right there. Feet never touched the ground. And then it was all academic at that point. Too much speed from Mockney. And look at Joe Mono in the middle of the pitch. He's all over the field. And if uh, Makani is not scoring, it's going to be Logan Tongo for a double right there. 10-6 at halftime. Feeling all right. But Utah had not taken advantage of two yellows in the first half. Perhaps more points were needed to uh, eventually win this game. Into the second half we go. Matias Freda, the fullback for San Diego, scores a try. Conversion's good. San Diego up 13-10. Then Joe Hodgson tied it up with a penalty goal. He struggled at times with conversions, but he has been money on penalty goals. You know, I think the more pressure in a situation, the better Hodgson is with his boot. He just seems to rise to the occasion that way. 52nd minute, Luke Burton misses a penalty goal. Doors open. But two minutes later, Burton makes another penalty goal. 16-13, San Diego has the lead. Then Joel Hodgson, again, ties it in the 63rd at 16-16. Right on cue, a big long blast, but in front of the sticks, we always knew this was going to come down to maybe whoever had the ball last in this match. These matches seem to just be so close between the Warriors and Legion every single year. Okay, one minute later, San Diego takes the lead uh, back. Will Hooley, the USA International, gets a penalty goal to take the lead in 1916. (sighs) And then this next next play is a tough one. Uh, 69th minute, Utah has a knock on near the goal line. Calvin Whiting... Uh, and Caleb Mockney here trying to connect. And unfortunately, this is knocked on. This would have made it made it 23-19 with a try between the posts right there. You know, and it was a great run from Whiting and a great line. Mockney usually so sure-handed. Would have had this, should have, could have had this. There's probably about 15 seconds in this match that we could circle with a highlighter that changed the outcome. Out of 80 minutes, 15 quick little seconds decided who won and who lost. 76th minute, Michael Smith for San Diego, who is done with med school in British Columbia, back on the team for the uh, last several uh, weeks of the season. He scores a try. That makes it 26-16. That is the final score. San Diego takes down Utah. We take a look at some of the stats now. Two tries apiece. Penalty goals, really the difference. You see four or five for San Diego. Handling errors were a real issue for Utah with 11. Uh, Everything else was pretty similar. And then again, three yellows to San Diego. Listen, Utah was number one in the league coming in. Didn't have a single one. And uh, unfortunately, we're minus eight during the man advantage of those yellows. And the big surprise to me is on that second yellow card to Grant. Obviously, Logan Tongo scores off of the uh, Ma'anonu yellow card and finishes off that play. But when Grant gets the yellow card for pulling down the mall with Henry Bell holding onto the ball two meters out, that infraction should have incurred the full seven-point penalty try as well because mm. the consequence of that play, if he doesn't pull down the mall, is a try. And I don't understand why that wasn't given in that position because then the Warriors go up 
two scores and it completely changes the outcome of the game. Still, you have to control what you can control. The Warriors, too many handling errors. This team is built on offloads and spreading the ball. So I don't slight Calvin Whiting for trying to make the offload to Mockany. He was in the right position. You have to control your own destiny in this position and perform when it matters most. And just too many minor moments went missing. Yeah, just a couple plays here and there, which is a bummer because down go the Warriors at home for the first time this season. As we take a look at some of the game notes in this one, some of the good news, season high, 3,714 fans. I talked to uh, one of the BYU men's basketball assistant coaches who took his family, his two boys play rugby. He hadn't been to a game. He absolutely loved it. Shout out to Cahill Fennell. Um, Utah, unfortunately, 1-7 versus San Diego. Legion have the Warriors number right now. Um, San Diego plus 8, uh, we mentioned, playing with those uh, – Yellow cards, they should have been minus eight at least, right? You're thinking, and then Utah 4-1 and one at home, as we mentioned. Uh, the Legion scored 14 points on kicks. That was the big difference in this game. Four of five penalty goals, one of one conversions, because one was automatic. Back-to-back -back losses for the first time this season for Utah. 16 points, 10th fewest in team history in a game. And 26 points by San Diego wasn't actually a lot. That was the second fewest in those eight meetings. So down goes Utah to San Diego. Uh, let's hand out some congrats. Congrats to rookie John Dupree, third round pick in last year's draft, who made his Warriors debut. Warrior number 114. Uh, an emotional day for him because two years ago, to the day of the game, his best friend passed away, made him promise him he'd play professional rugby. And he fulfilled that promise Saturday. And oh, by the way, he's the first draft pick from last year to play in a game for the Warriors. Pretty, pretty cool moment for John to be able to remember his friend and fulfill that promise. An incredible moment for him and great to see, you know, obviously the emotions run high and we would have loved to have taken home the win in that memory as well. But big congrats to Warrior 114. Then Ali Khalifi, 50th cap in MLR, two-time champ with Seattle, World Cup veteran twice over, experienced leader on this team. Congratulations to Ali, who becomes the 49th player in the league to get 50. Okay, MLR first 15. Three Warriors played really well and made it despite the loss. Jamie Lane. Calvin Whiting and Caleb Mocken. I think this was the best game that we've seen from Tree in a Warriors uniform. He was everywhere. He was so crucial at the lineouts. The ruck arrivals were fantastic. He was able to slow down that San Diego Legion offense. Calvin Whiting had some great runs, but the biggest thing for me was the way he was able to shut down that San Diego Legion midfield. We didn't call Ma'anonu's game all game yeah. unless... He was getting sin binned, and that was in large part <laughs> to the defense of Calvin Whiting. And then Caleb Mockany does everything for this team. He's one of the best players in all of Major League Rugby and finally getting the honors he deserves at the fullback position. All right, the other scores from round 12. Rugby ATL defeated Chicago 27-12. to World Glory DC scored right before the half to win 7-3 at Dallas. That one ended after 40 minutes with weather. And New York beat Nola Gold 54-19 to on Sunday. Here's what the standings look like in Major League Rugby. San Diego still atop the league with 49 points. Seattle uh, with 39. San Diego's going to be tough to overcome here. Houston with 36. Utah trying to stay in the hunt. Eight points back. Dallas and Chicago there as well. In the East, New England, uh, clearly the number one in the East. D.C., New York, NOLA, and Rugby ATL comes back into the hunt after last week. Toronto with eight points. What sticks out from the standings through Week 12? Uh, I really think the chance for the Utah Warriors to make the playoffs still very alive and well with three games in hand uh, with the teams that are above them in the table in the Western Conference. You look at the difference there. We still have games against Houston and Seattle, Dallas this coming week, and Chicago. So a lot of points on offer still in the West for this Utah Warriors team to make the playoffs. The next couple of weeks are huge, obviously at Dallas, but then they come back home and, hey, the Sabercats are in town May 20th. It's going to be huge. Make sure you're in the stands. Warriors Nation, you saw the difference it made in the San Diego match. Let's ratchet it up another notch here with the Houston Sabercats coming to town May 20th. Get your tickets. Get your seats. Be ready. Go to warriorsrugby.com now. That's warriorsrugby.com. and Get your tickets for May 20th with the Houston Sabercats coming to Zions Bank Stadium. The first matchup was unbelievable. Can't wait for the second one. Okay, let's preview this Saturday's game at Dallas. Saturday, May 13th. This game actually got moved up two hours due to potential weather in the area in Dallas at Choctaw Stadium there. Uh, TV's on KMYU, streaming kslsports.com and the Rugby Network, and we've got the radio call on ESPN 700 and 960. Certainly Dallas has struggled the last couple of years. This year, 
One in 10 got the first win after going scoreless last year. 10 points. They allow a lot of tries, second most in the league. And we flash back to the first meeting in round two. Utah won 33-25. Tries by Paul Asike and Joe Mano had a double. Bailey Wilson, Zion going. Utah pretty comfortable with 12 minutes left, 33-15. But Dallas scored twice to cut it to eight late. Utah was four or five on conversions. Dallas missed all five. Left 10 points out there that would have won the game in theory. Those kicks were the difference, Banks. And this is a Dallas Jackals team that is pretty good. Don't sleep on their record because they can turn in 60 to 70 minutes of really good rugby. The key here is to punish Dallas when they make a mistake. This Utah Warriors team is really going to have to be on their A game and play up at this point and, and execute their game plan rather than playing down to the level that the Dallas Jackals will want them to play at. And winning on the road is uh, always tough, no matter where you go. So that'll, that'll be a storyline in this one. A couple other storylines. Warriors lead the series 3-0 plus 83-point differential. The most points scored in a game in Utah Warriors history and the fewest allowed are both versus Dallas from last year, 69-5. and five. And, of course, we remember the former Warriors who play for the J Jackals. We'll see if they're in the 23. Danny Christensen, James Bifale, Carson Shoemaker, and Alex Tucci. Always fun to see those guys. A couple of players to watch on a very Argentine-heavy team. Uh, Ten of the 15 starters last week, by the way, from Argentina for Dallas. Adrian Bouillasen is a physical number eight. Hedo Gomez Vada is very physical as well. He's got he's bleached his hair since this photo. Uh, Aka Moroni has scored three tries, and Martin Elias is a uh, very good kicker at fly half. I think everything for this team, for that forward pack, runs through Boyson. He's big. He's physical. They cue off of him. If he's having a good day, then that Dallas Jackals forward pack could have a good day. And then the playability of Elias at fly half, really getting that back line involved. Can he do something creative with them to put some points on the board? Uh, it'll be tough against this Utah Warriors defense. Okay, MLR round 13. The other games uh, coming up this weekend. Friday, we got, oh, Friday Night Lights. Let's go. Toronto taking on Rugby ATL on Saturday. Nola Gold in San Diego. Interesting to see if Nola can challenge San Diego. Sabercats and Seawolves, huge one in the West. We mentioned Dallas and Utah. Then on Sunday, a pair with Old Glory DC taking on the Free Jacks. That's a really good one in the East. And then Chicago taking on New York. Lots of exciting rugby to watch, so make sure you tune in wherever you get your rugby. Circled on my calendar in the Eastern Conference, that Old Glory DC Frischel to be a 40-plus point barn burner for both teams. Notably, Seattle's uh, Rickard Hatting, by the way, leading try score in the league with 11, injured two weeks ago against Dallas, had surgery, but he's expected to be back before the regular season. We'll see if Hatting's available when Utah plays at Seattle coming up on June 4th. That'll be a big loss for Seattle. Uh, all the best to Record in, uh, in healing up well. If fans, you want to get involved in the game of rugby, you want to get your kids involved with their heroes that they see on the field, it's time to get them signed up for the Junior Warriors Clinic pregame for every Utah Warriors home game, connecting the state of Utah through rugby and its youth. Go to junior.warriorsrugby.com. That's jr.warriorsrugby.com. It was sold out in the uh, last game against San Diego, so uh, make sure you sign up as quick as you can while uh, some spots still uh, are available. Okay, let's bring in our guest today. He is the try scorer He is the former Washington State uh, defensive end and linebacker. He is Logan Tango on Dub Nation. Logan, how's it going, man? Thanks for joining the program. I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're doing good. Uh, let's talk about that San Diego game. Certainly, uh, it was nice to get on the front foot there with that early try from you. Uh, what do you remember from that play? I just I saw a lot of space, and then I, that was a good uh, uh, a rug by Lance. And I was like, I don't need to get in that run. I need to stay out there where the space at. Then Jolie was working his ass off to get me the ball. For me, that's the if you go back and watch the whole the whole play from the beginning. For me, it was a team try. So I give all the credit to my boys, man. That was that was a crazy. That was a team try for me. Well, and for Jolie to take the hit on one end from Ma'anonu and then work all the way down and still have the presence to communicate for you guys to stay out was absolutely incredible. It seemed like the communication from all 23 guys on the roster was on point. How did that feel as you were interchanging between the forwards and the backs being on the pitch? It was good. We always talk about how we, we trust our big boys, the forwards, to do what they do past, the past. Then they'll give me, they give us the, the space and everything. So it's all about trusting each other, man. So from 1 to 23, before we went on that field, we knew that the chemistry we had, we knew the game plan, 
and we, we stuck with it. We trust the process. We trust the system. And then it sucks we didn't get the the, the We didn't get the win. But I'm talking like these boys, man. The, the hard work they put in and the trust that you put in for each other, it's it, it's really uh, it's it's really good now for the, for our team with the Warriors moving forward. We were talking about it a moment ago. We felt like there were just a couple of moments where this game swings. Obviously, a, a late knock on was tough. Uh, almost in you know, you know a seven point try position. A couple knock ons here and there and penalties. Michael Smith scores that try because the ball's given up suddenly in, in the twenty two. Otherwise, you guys can go down and score and make it. Kind of where did this game? Uh, where was this game won and lost in your opinion? Damn, uh, that's hard. That's hard. That that that, knock, that last knock on it was hurts. But so, like I said before, man, Caleb is he's one of the best player on this team, man. Uh, we'll we'll trust him. Like you know I mean, it, it happens. It, it happens to every best player in every sport you play. Things like that's gonna happen. But uh, man, that that's a I don't I'm not gonna make an excuse who lost, but that's on us. Like the whole team. You know I mean we had them from the beginning and then. But for some reason, San Diego came back and won that. So, Well, let's flash forward now and kind of preview the matchup with Dallas. You guys were able to punish them for their mistakes in the first match. But this is a very different team now as you guys go down to the Lone Star State in Texas for this matchup. What are you looking forward to against Dallas this week? Yeah, honestly, I'm looking forward to, the, to see, see one of my, my good friends, James my father, man. Uh, but yeah, it's 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 a good uh, it's a good game for us to to, to set the bar even higher than it was before. You know what I mean? There's a lot of there's a lot of games left, and I'll tell you that there's the playoff. Like a lot of people already count us out, so this is a good game to to reset and and, and, get, and get the just try to prove people wrong that the Warriors are still up there, man. And I'm very excited for that. Six games left. Certainly, you got to put up a bunch of points. Uh, eight points back of that third spot. What kind of uh, pressure? And perhaps that's positive because you, you know you have an opportunity here with some good home games and an opportunity to go on the road and, and perhaps win. What kind of uh, pressure do you feel to? Hey, every week we got to bring it if we're going to make the playoffs. Honestly, I don't. I don't think. I don't think we have to, that, that kind of pressure. We know. We know what we we have to do. And then props to uh, uh, our head coach Craig, man. He he do it like a great job to get us ready, to get us prepared for all these kind of moment. So I don't think there's any pressure. I mean, the only thing we worry about, I mean, it's Dallas in front of us. And then I trust, man. I trust his the our team. We know what we can do. We know what we're capable of doing. So I'm not gonna say like we are under a lot of pressure because I'm not gonna say that. Might be some of the boys, but I trust this team. Like what we're gonna do Saturday, and we know what we have to do, and that's the best part of, uh, of the sports. You know what I mean? When you're down, when you're up, like things gonna happen, and then it's how you, it's, it's how you respond. But I trust and believe in what we're gonna do this week. It's gonna I mean everybody in the team know what we what we're gonna do and what we have to do. So, but you know what I mean? Dallas is a, is a great team. I'll tell you that. Don't don't. Don't look at Dallas at their record. You can't do that. That is a great team. They'll they'll be ready to the to play. They'll be ready to play and all that. So but I'm not I'm not saying that they're not a good team, but that is a great team. It's gonna be a great game. I mean, we we know what we have to do. We know what we gotta do. So we can't wait. So you mentioned the Uso James Faifale, former warrior and obviously a very close friend and family member to a lot of the guys around here in the Utah rugby community. We put you. We put James on the goal line, flat out sprint to the opposite side of the field. Who's winning that race? I think James knows who's going to win that, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me re let me rephrase that then. You're on the 22 with the ball, and it's one-on-one, -on -one and you got to run heads up with James. Are you trucking the Uso, or are you going to make him dance a little bit? I'll tell you this, man. If, if I got If I got to get that – Try to win the game. I'm going straight. <laughs> no, That's what I want to hear. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I want to know straight, like, yeah, a race with. Uh, how about Joe Mono, your fellow uh, winger and cousin? Oh, a race. Damn. Oh man, it's it's hard. Also, oh, 
I'll take I'll 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 pack myself for a long distance, but a uh, 20 yards, 2015, Joe will. Oh mm. yeah, Joe got that one. <laughs> That's awesome. Long distance, um, 40, 50, I'll pack myself. But you got him? 20, okay. yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Joe that's that's fair. Either. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did want to ask you about uh, what you saw from John Dupree making his debut. Certainly emotional. We talked about it two years to the day his friend passed away, that he promised he'd play professional rugby. John's been the first rookie to play and a, and a guy who's been rostered a couple of times. What does he bring to this team, and what has he done to earn that playing time as a rookie? Uh, my first time since uh, John came to the program, the dude worked hard, man. I'll tell you that. It's like it don't matter what we doing, he works hard. He's work. We work his ass off, and that's the beauty of it, man. In the weight room, on the field, the scout team. When he when he, when John is not on the twenty three, he will practice his ass off like he's on the twenty three. He will give us the great looks like. That's what we love about him, man. And then for that story, that was my – I didn't know the story till after the, the game. And then that's one of the things that you – like, man, this, this is life – this is all life is about, you know what I mean? So the relationship, the, all the achievements and stuff. So for me to hear that story, man, it was it was emotional, man. But I'm so happy for him. Like, all love to him, man. For two years ago, he promised that. And for, for, for you as a person to – to keep that promise for, for two years and then achieve, that is hard. That is not easy work right there, man. So, man, hats off to John, man. But, yeah, he he bring the energy. He like he, If you tell him what to do as, a, as an opponent, opponent, he will do it the right way. But I, I'm happy for him. He he earned all that, man. I'm telling you, he's one of the, the hard workers in the, in the group right now. So, well, all the best to him and all the best to you, Uso Faku, and thank you for coming on, cuz. Yeah, thank you, guys. I always love man. Logan Tango on uh, Dub Nation. We appreciate his time. If you're ready to get into the red and black and rock the four stripes, join the Warriors fans in the best-looking kit in all of Major League Rugby. Go to shop.warriorsrugby.com, get all your gear, and be ready for every Warriors home game or to rep your fandom out in the wild shop. WarriorsRugby.com to get it all now. We now introduce a new segment to the show called Banksy's Rugby Rant, where Banksy gets 60 seconds to rant about whatever he wants in the world of rugby. Take it away, buddy. We need to do a better job of teaching the game of rugby. It's great for rugby fans and people who know the game. We've been around it for a long time to see what Major League Rugby has become. But most of the growth of the game, both at the youth level and for adult fans coming to the game, needs to have more teaching moments. And I'm talking from the top of the league to the team level to the club level. We need to do a better job of opening our arms and embracing the new fans coming into the game from the very basics of the size of the field how to restart play to the intricacies of the game and little subtle nuances of the scrums of the plays where even a lot of seasoned rugby fans might not know and understand what's going on like taking a marked kick inside the 22 there are a lot of things that we can do to improve the fan experience and bring new friends into the game and everyone from the commissioner of the league to the fans in the stands can do a better job of helping new fans learn the game we know and love that was it'll get there it'll get there no there's some of those i've i've got them lined up there's some heat in there don't you worry jerem <laughs> we're coming with the top right down the middle first. Oh, that's great and amen to that message that's great we want to finish with a mention about warrior superfan jacob peraza who has terminal cancer but says he chooses to live and give back he was originally given 12 to 18 months to live but research has provided him a prolonged life. This was a story that Ashley uh, Solowin brought up during the game broadcast Saturday. He's hosting a cancer research fundraiser on May 20th with a silent auction. The Warriors versus Houston game coming up at Zions Bank Stadium. If you'd like to donate, please uh, reach out and uh, donate to uh, Jacob Peraza when that cause there. Of course, you can get a discount uh, to the game that goes to cancer research if you uh, use the QR code, uh, code on your screen. Our best to Jacob Peraza as well. Good to have him at the games. He's uh, loud and proud for the Utah Warriors, which is awesome. Okay, that'll do it for us. Like and share this episode of Dumb Nation and follow the Utah Warriors on social media. We'll talk to you Saturday. Again, four Mountain Time. That's two hours earlier than it was uh, because of weather. Utah at Dallas on KMYU, streamed on kslsports.com and the Rugby Network. And we'll have the radio call on ESPN 700 and 960. 
Our thanks to Logan Tongo. Today's show was produced by Mason Benson. For Banksy, I'm Jerem. Go Warriors! <laughs>